Hello everyone, welcome to Meet Fish Poultry Process Technology Lecture Series. My name is Shiv Prasad. I'm an assistant professor at Department of Food Technology, Vignans Foundation for Science, Technology and Research. In our today's lecture, we will be having a discussion on one of the important concepts that is meat hygiene and sanitation in meat as well as poultry industry. So how exactly all of this process is occurring in an established meat industry, we will have an in detail understanding on the same. So let us begin our lecture by understanding what exactly meat hygiene is. So whenever we are talking about meat hygiene, so it is nothing but it refers to a set of activities that requires implementation of specific standards codes of practice and regulatory action by the competent authority to ensure safety and suitability of the meat that is set for the consumer consumption. Okay, so that is what meat hygiene is all about. So it is the set of activities which is governed by a competitive authority and it has to be legally abide by an industry. So that legal regulatory action is provided by a competitive authority. So in case of India, it is FSSAI. So that is nothing but Food Safety and Standard Authority of India. So they are giving us a set of rules and regulation and also an established standard that has to be eventually met by every other established meat processing unit who are in turn producing different meat products so that they are in turn ensuring that whatever the product that is out in the market on the, con uh, on the, on the shelf, so it is not causing any kind of a problem for the consumer after consumption. So that is what meat hygiene is all about. Okay, so the hygiene requirements are to be met at different stages of production, processing, transportation and must include a personal slaughter and meat processing equipment and environment. So hygiene is not merely in an established processing unit. It has to come from the beginning so prior to the slaughtering. So, prior to the slaughtering of an animal, the hygiene of an animal is of utmost priority as well. So, the hygiene starts from the beginning that is before the slaughtering of an animal and till it reaches the consumer. So, that is what hygiene is all about. So, during the production, processing also and also when the meat is being transported from one place to another place. So, besides that, we will also have to concentrate on the personal who is in direct contact with the meat as well as meat processing. So whenever a personal is coming in direct contact, he or she has to abide by certain good hygienic practices. So the personal hygiene is of utmost priority so that we can eventually tackle any kind of an hazard which might be posing because of the unhygienic, you know, handling of the meat as well as meat products. So that is also one of the important thing that needs our attention here. So to ensure <coughs> this particular proper cleaning and sanitation practice which are, have to be followed by a meat industry and should include disinfection of the meat plant as well as premises equipment and storage area. So to ensure the meat hygiene one ha must also have to in, uh, ensure that there is a proper disinfection of the meat plant. So the meat plant has to be regularly disinfected so that we can reduce all the possible biological hazard eventually. Okay, so the biological hazard eventually includes most of the microorganism here. So microorganism of our important interest in here. Okay, whenever we are talking about biological hazards. So by cleaning the meat premises as well as the equipment which are exclusively being used for processing of the meat into different products. So all of the equipments and the storage area needs to be properly sanitized. So once they are properly sanitized and dis disinfected, so we are making sure or we are ensuring that there is least contamination which might be posed because of all of this equipment. Okay, so that is where hygiene also comes into picture as an important criteria. Okay, so failure to maintaining meat hygiene may pose public health hazard and therefore evaluation of the meat for meat-borne pathogens which can cause disease of public health importance is very very important. So if at all we are not following regular implementation of the meat hygienic practices in a meat processing plant then we will have to 
you know if we are failing to meet any kind of a hygiene so that means that we are posing serious pub health, public health hazard problem so that means that by the consumption of any of the meat which is out in the market from a plant which is not being followed or which is not instilled specifically the meat hygienic practices then it might actually pose serious public health hazards so this public health hazards may be in terms of the pathogens so the pathogens might be present which includes such as like the salmonella salmonella causes salmonellosis or salmonella typhi causes typhoid so which is of public health importance so it is of utmost priority that every meat processing plant must have to ensure that the good hygienic practices are effectively in place so that we can effectively combat against any kind of a public health hazards that might be in uh, in in uh, that might have been posed okay so that is also one of the important things to ensure all of this is standardizedly done in an orderly manner so that we can effectively produce a you know product which is safe for consumption safe for consumption so there is an established regulatory authority in india called as food safety and standard authority of india so food safety and standards food product standards and food additive regulation 2011 also warrant that every product being sold in the indian market must meet or conform to the legal standard of quality so whatever the legal standard that has been put forth by the regulator authority such as like fsci so the meat processing industry must have to abide so that eventually there will not be any kind of a public health hazard problem which might be posed because of the consumption of the meat from a meat processing plant all right so this is about the importance of hygiene in the current scenario so there are three important principles of meat hygiene so what are the three important principles which are of utmost importance for a meat processing industry so the first one is prevention of microbial contamination during meat product manufacturing by adopting cleaning as well as sanitation practices okay so the first and foremost thing is to prevent the microbial contamination so we will have to ensure that there is no cross contamination of the microorganism that is actually occurring during the preparation of any kind of a food product specifically the meat product in here so how exactly this can be adopted or the how ex ex exactly this can be avoided by properly implementing the cleaning as well as sanitation practices so this is of utmost priority because at regular interval of time the entire meat plant as well as the equipment which is being used for processing of meat into different products must be sanitized by sanitization we are ensuring that the number of microbial load on the equipment and in the meat processing plant is effectively checked okay so that is our first principle so the second one is minimization of microbial growth in the meat product by storing them at a low temperature so as we have already studied so since the water activity of the meat is extremely high because the moisture content in the meat ranges from anywhere between 70 to 75% that means when the moisture content is high so the water activity will also be high so the proliferation and the activity of microorganism will be at highest ratio okay so we what we have to do to avoid them we will have to store them at a low temperature by storing the meat as well as meat product at a low temperature we are ensuring that there is low incidence of meat spoilages the spoilage of the meat will be less so that is because the cold temperature will ensure that any of the mesophilic thermophilic as well as thermoduric microorganism will not grow and produce any kind of an undesirable changes so that is our major aim so this will become our second important principle of meat hygiene so coming to the third one reduction or elimination of the risk of microbial contamination by applying suitable heat treatment and packaging system at the final processing storage so this is also of one of important um, no point that has to be noted in here so what this particular principle says as this that 
if we are intending to load down the microbial load then we will have to subject them for a standard thermal treatment so here we are specifically mentioning it as a heat treatment so that means that thermal treatment is effectively in place so these thermal treatment can be of any type so it can be the ultra high temperature it can be sterilization or it can be the production of the canned meat so any of the thermal process which might be in place will effectively low down the number of microbial load in the final product and thereby the processed product must be properly packaged by packaging the processed product what we are ensuring we are ensuring or we are keeping the microorganism away from the my, uh, food product so that means that there is no kind of a contamination that is actually happening so that is also one of the important thing that has to be noted in here okay so these are the three important principle as far as meat hygiene is considered okay so how exactly one can actually achieve this so is there any uh, kind of a mode which can be in place so that we can effectively achieve the meat hygiene practices so the first two useful scheme to adapt various level of meat production specifically towards the hygiene is good hygienic practices which is also regarded as GHP and hazard analysis and critical control point which is uh, abbreviated as HACCP okay so by effectively in installing GHP as well as HACCP in place we are making sure that the good hygienic practices can be effectively you know in place so that the product that is produced from the meat processing plant is of suitable quality all right so that is what is of important concern so let us now have an understanding on individual you know levels of meat production that is the schemes that is good hygienic practices as well as hazard analysis and critical control point so first thing we have good hygienic practices which is also abbreviated as GHP so let us begin by understanding what is its importance and how exactly it can be implemented in a meat processing plant okay so the microbial meat spoilage or food spoiling through meat can be prevented in my if the microbial load or the bacterial contamination which occurs during the slaughtering and meat handling is kept as low as possible so what this particular point is trying to explain us is that so the microbial meat spoilage so anything which is in accordance to the spoilage of the meat as well as the meat product so it can be effectively prevented by ensuring proper you know hygienic practices during the slaughtering as well as handling of the meat so whenever we are making sure that there is a proper hygienic as well as uh, hygienic practices in slaughtering as well as handling so we are effectively checking on the growth of microorganisms so the microbial load will be kept as low as possible okay so this is exclusively because of making sure that the good hygienic practices is in place okay so that is of one of the important factors so if during the slaughtering as well during the handling if we are keeping the microorganism load to an effectively low level then the spoilage of the meat as well as the food poisoning which might actually persist following the contamination might be significantly reduced okay so that is of important concern to us okay so the key for achieving this strict meat hygiene including the uninterrupted cold chain throughout the entire meat production handling and chain through the following intervention so what are the interventions that are of important concern so that we can achieve this good hygienic practices so how exactly one can achieve this good hygienic practices so there are a lot of interventions so let us know what are the interventions that we are going to study in here so the good hygienic practices whenever we are talking about the interventions regularly includes the personal hygiene so the hygiene of an individual who is in direct contact with the meat and second one is the hygienic practices during the processing of the meat so whenever we are processing meat into different products when an individual is in direct contact what are the hygienic practices that must be ensured so that the contamination load will be eventually avoided and the third important intervention is hygienic during meat processing premises so the premises in which the processing of the meat into different product is happening that is also of an important concern so if the meat processing plant is extremely contaminated it means that it is giving a way 
for further cross contamination to happen so to ensure that it is not happening so the premises where the meat is being processed should also be you know given a significant importance so that the contamination can be eventually avoided okay so next important hygiene practices includes the hygiene when it comes to the equipment so the equipments which are chiefly used for the processing of meat should be effectively sanitized and clean so that the microbial load as well as any other kinds of physical chemical or biological hazard can be effectively taken care okay so let us have an understanding on individual ghp principles starting with personal hygiene so whenever we are talking about personal hygiene it is of important thing that we will have to consider that one must always wear protective clothes so one must always make sure that one is properly dressed so there should not be any kind of a contaminated uniform okay so if the uniform is contaminated it means that there might be a residue of microorganism which might be lying on the apron so a clean clothing must be worn during the production throughout the time okay so that is of an important concern okay so besides that washing hands before starting the work and repeated washing hands during the work so this is also one of the important thing and also one must always make sure that the hands are not contaminated so if the hands are soiled just the way it is shown in this particular picture it means that there is going to be a lot of microbial load which might actually or in turn contaminate the entire lot of the meat as well as meat products so the hygienic when it comes to personal hygiene so the hands must be significantly washed repeatedly so that we can avoid any kind of a contamination that might be happening via the skin because as we are already aware the skin is a you know a skin harbors a lot of natural microbial load which might include staph aureus staphylococcus aureus which is a food poisoning causing bacteria so there might be an incidence where we can actually transmit any kind of a contaminated microflora that might be present in our hand to the eventually final product so washing of hand regularly is of important concern whenever we are in direct contact with the food product okay so and also no fingerings watches as well as bracelets so that is of important concern because they might actually harbor a lot of microorganism because we are continuously wearing them and they might actually come in contact with the food product so there is there has to be a specific policy towards wearing any kind of a jewelry inside the meat processing plant specifically the personal who are, who are in direct contact with the meat product okay so to access the production area with working clothes only so that means that when i'm entering the working area i cannot be dressed the way that i have dressed right now so there must be a proper clothing that must be worn which might be a fresh clothing to enter inside a meat processing plant or any other food processing plant for that matter and also there must be a clean apron as i have already mentioned and besides that the periodic examination of the staff so the person who is in direct contact with the food product he or she must be periodically subjected for medical examinations by subjecting them for medical examination we are ensuring that he or she is not suffering from any kind of a transmissible disease so if they are suffering from any kind of a transmissible disease it means that there is always a possibility of you know transmission of such kind of a uh, possible microorganism to the final product and eventually to the consumer so besides these hygienic practices one must also trim their nails regularly okay because nails might actually harbor a lot of dust and dirt if it is not trimmed at a regular interval of time as you can see in this particular picture so the nails must be regularly trimmed and one must always wear a gloves okay so besides that if a person is having cut wounds so it has to be properly wounded with a bandage or a bandaid because whenever we have a cut wound it means that there might be a lot of microorganism which might be residing inside the cut wound so whenever a person is coming in contact directly with such kind of a uh, wound in uh, with the product which is being processed then there might be always a cross contamination that is happening so all of this take hygienic practices must be in place so that we can eventually tackle any kind of a problem that is happening via 
the personal hygienic practices. Alright, so the second next important thing that has to be noted in here is the hygienic practices during the meat processing. So during the processing of the meat, so what are the hygienic practices that must be ensured? So the first thing is ideally meat has to be cut or it might be deboned and it must be carried out in a climatized room. So when I say climatized room, it means that there must be a proper temperature. So approximately 10 degree temperature must be maintained with a low air humidity okay so that is the ideal temperature that is required so that we can check on the multiplication of any kind of a mesophilic thermophilic and thermoduric microorganism okay so if visual contamination on the meat has occurred during manufacturing one must never try to wash them off so if it is a non-edible part and if it is possessing any kind of a minor contamination also one must always remove it with knives okay so we will have to significantly discard the part which we you know uh, we we perceive that it might have been contaminated and might possess a lot of microorganism in them so we will have to chop it off and then it has to be eventually discarded if because of that we will have a perception that the entire meat must have been contaminated then it then the entire carcass has to be discarded so that point has to be effectively noted in here it is not that we just wash it off and then leave it for the further processing because it might always end up having a kind of a problem causing a problem of any public health hazard okay so that is of important concern here okay so next one is never take meat pieces which might have accidentally fallen on the ground so as we are aware so the ground contains a lot of microorganisms so we just don't have to pick up the meat slice which is fallen on the ground and then mix it with the entire lot because the meat which is fallen on the ground is obviously contaminated and also by mixing it with the other lot we are contaminating the entire lot of the product which is soon to be packaged and left to the market okay so that is of important thing that has to be noted here okay besides that the containers which are effectively used for the uh, you know um, filling of the meat as well as meat product must be properly sanitized and clean so if it is if we are using um, you know packaging materials such as like ldp or vacuum packaging they must be subjected for proper sanitation proper sanitation and sterilization Okay, so in case of uh, LDP, HDP and everything, they, they have to be uh, subjected for UV sanitation which ultimately ensures that any kind of a microbial load that must have been possessing on the surface of the packaging material are eventually reduced. Okay, so this was about the hygienic practices which must be ensured during the processing. Okay, so next thing we have the hygienic practices of meat processing premises that means that how exactly the meat processing plant must be designed so the designing of the meat processing plant is also often important concern because a proper ventilation proper lighting and the proper room requirement including the washroom as well as the bathroom must be ensured at the meat processing plant so let us have an understanding what are the criteria which has to be taken into consideration thereby ensuring the hygienic practices okay so the first thing is the provision for the change room to the duty staff so the staff who are in regular contact with the food product or who is processing the meat into different product so as we have already said they cannot wear the regular cloth so there has to be a distinct clothing that has to be worn by an individual or the duty staff who is in contact with the food product okay so that means that there has to be a proper change room which must be provided in the meat processing unit so that the, uh, the the staff can actually go there and then have and ensure that there is a proper changing of the clothing okay so the walls in case of the room where the meat as well as the byproducts are handled must have smooth as well as easily washable surfaces so it is because if there is any kind of a spillage on the surface or the wall of the uh, environment where the processing is actually happening or where the product is being stored we will have to wash it off okay it, there has to be an accessibility for easy washing if it is not accessible for easy washing it means that it can harbor a lot of microorganism eventually and ultimately contaminate the entire plant okay so it is of utmost priority that whenever the wall 
inside the meat processing plant must be covered with the steel so that it will facilitate easy washing or it must be you know uh, covered with the wall tails or it must be at least with the washable paint so the washable paint must be used so that it will give an easy way for uh, cleaning of the meat processing plant okay so the floors must be um, impermeable to water and reasonably smooth for good cleaning but anti-slip for worker safety so that is also one of the important matter that has to be noted in here that means that whenever the flooring in case of the meat processing plant should not you know it should be impermeable to water that there, there should not be any kind of a stagnant water which should be seen okay and also one must always ensure that if the water is stagnant it might be slippery so anti-slippery tails or anti-slippery flooring must be in uh, must be throughout the processing unit so that there is no kind of a problem persisting to the worker as well okay so following which we have the rooms in the case of the meat processing plant should have proper ventilation so there should be a proper sufficient ventilation though that there should be a way for the inlet of the sufficient air coming in inside the meat processing plant and there must be air conditioning in required rooms only so the required rooming here is the cutting as well as deboning room where the temperature has to be maintained anywhere between 10 to 12 percent 12 degree centigrade okay so in case of the slaughtering area it is not ideally required because the slaughtering area the animal is still alive and then animal might be subjected for slaughtering so in the slaughtering area it is not required and also in the you know de-skinning area where the skin and eviscerating area it is not required only when we are cutting and deboning in case of the meat as well as meat products so there we will be requiring air condition as an important criteria okay so besides that we will also ensure that there is a proper supply of the hot as well as cold water and there is no you know live wire which could be seen in case of the meat processing unit so there must be a proper provision for you know uh, insulation that must be provided for the hot water as well because we should not lose on the heat so there must be a proper insulation which should be sufficiently given to the hot water piping and there must not be any live wires seen throughout the meat processing unit so it has to be imbibed inside the wall okay so uh, besides that openings for ventilation must be bird as well as insect proof so if we are providing sufficient ventilation we will have to ensure that there is no provision for a bird or an insect to enter inside the plant because they might actually carry a variety of hazardous microorganism okay which might be in turn transmitted to the meat as well as meat products so whenever we are providing a ventilation we will have to ensure that there is no provision for entry of any kind of a uh, you know um, um, birds or animals or insect as such okay so that is also one of the important point to be noted okay so next thing we have other important hygienic practices that is hygiene that is equipment hygiene so how exactly one has to maintain an equipment okay so the equipment should have proper sanitary design and construction so when i say proper sanitary design and construction it means that most of the equipment must be easily accessible for cleaning okay and do not possess any kind of a microorganism after the cleaning so the most of the equipment in a food industry is mostly made up of with stainless steel okay so stainless steel either 316 or 3 uh, 316 is generally used and besides that there might be other designated coatings as well okay so the design must allow easy and profound cleaning so as i've already said so usage of stainless steel as an equipment uh, i mean uh, as a uh, uh, as a construction um, design for the processing of meat um, use as i've already said usage of stainless steel for construction as a construction material for uh, different meat equipment will eventually uh, signify that there will be a profound cleaning which can be ensured because if we are using any other kind of a material it becomes really really difficult for ensuring 100% cleaning okay so the stainless steel must be used for all the food contact surfaces example the working tables so the meat hooks okay and any other kind of tools or equipments that are being used so the material of construction must always be stainless steel because we are ensuring proper or profound cleaning 
okay so the food grade synthetic material should be used for meat containers as well as other utensils so if a lot if at all we are using any other kind of a container we will have to ensure that they are food grade quality so we cannot use the regular plastic wares because they might not be of food grade quality so whenever we are making sure that we are using anything other than stainless steel then we will have to ensure that they must be of food grade quality okay so next important type of an uh, aspect which uh, which must be in place is hacp so when i say hacp it is nothing but hazard analysis and critical control point hazard analysis and critical control point which is abbreviated as hacp so what is the importance of hazard analysis and critical control point so the major problem with the hazard is that it can be any kind of a physical chemical or biological contaminant okay so hazard can be defined as any physical chemical or biological contaminants which causes possible problem to the human health okay so it can be physical hazard can be the hair or it can be any kind of a jewelry that the person who is in direct contact with the food product is actually wearing so that is the reason why personal hygiene is of utmost priority okay so that can be the physical hygiene and the chemical hygiene can be any kind of a chemical residues residues or antibiotic residues as most of the meat animals are fed with lot of antibiotics their residues has to be within the limit as prescribed by the regulatory authority so in our case it is fssci okay so then comes the biological hazard so the biological hazard can be classified ideally into visible as well as invisible agents so the visible agents it can be any kind of a physical insects so invisible is mostly the microorganism which includes the bacteria you know uh, yeast as well as mold or any other kind of microorganism okay so effectively if we have to avoid all of this hazardous elements then we will have to mention make, make sure that there is a proper implementation of hacp so this will ensure that any kind of a physical chemical or biological hazard might be effectively giving a way to the contamination as well as causing any kind of an ill effect in the consumer which can be effectively avoided so for that we need to have hacp in place by having hacp in place we can possibly check on any kind of a further hygienic constraints or hygienic problem that is persisting in the meat processing plant okay so besides that it will also give us an indication about what are the process controls that must be in place so what are the different critical points so what must be the temperature to avoid or combat effectively against this critical critical point so all of this will be explained effectively by having hacp properly implemented in a meat processing unit okay so this was about the hygienic practices that is hacp okay so let us now have an understanding on what are the cleaning and the sanitation process that is effectively practiced in a meat processing plant okay so let us begin by understanding what exactly cleaning and sanitation means so cleaning refers to removal of any kind of a visible physical chemical dirt and some extent the bacteria from the equipment surface and sometimes from the product itself from the processing environment so cleaning is nothing but effectively we are taking care or removing any kind of a visible physical chemical as well as any other kind of a dirt material so if the dirt material is present on the surface of the meat take an example of a meat animal so we have to subject it for proper cleaning so how exactly it is done by subjecting it for proper grooming as well as washing during the washing what we are doing we are removing any kind of a adhered dust dirt which are visible to the naked eyes okay so by ensuring that we are 
effectively reducing the number of microbial load which might be processing on the surface and throughout the environment in the meat processing unit okay so on the contrary sanitation terms is used for the disinfection of the product or product contact surfaces by killing all the spoilage as well as pathogenic microorganism okay so while cleaning is to remove the any kind of a visible dirt material so the sanitation will ensure that any kind of a microbial or biological hazard such as like microorganism that might be present will be effectively taken care because microorganism can be either spoilage causing or it can be pathogenic as far as contamination is concerned okay so the spoilage causing will lead eventually for the you know deteriorating the product quality and pathogenic will eventually cause any kind of a problem to the consumer who is actually consuming the specific product which has been contaminated okay so the cleaning as well as sanitation will ensure that all of this problem are effectively taken care okay so the inactivation of microorganism requires antimicrobial treatment so what are these antimicrobial treatment so they must be carried out in food industry through hot water or steam so they are the disinfectant agent so the disinfectant or the sanitization agent effectively used in case of a meat processing plant is either hot water or the steam so that they are the antimicrobial agents that means that they are completely destructing the microorganism okay so here medium of heat is either steam or water hot water so which has to be effectively used through the application of the disinfectant as well as sanitizer so there might be chemical disinfectant or there might be physical disinfectant okay so the physical disinfectant effectively includes the hot water as well as steam and the chemical disinfectant includes the quaternary ammonium salts and everything so let us have an understanding on what are the important types which are effectively being used okay so before that let us have an understanding on what are the different kinds of cleaning agents that can be effectively used in case of a meat processing plant so the traditional cleaning agents of the substances which are used are detergents for manual use of alkaline such as sodium carbonate so sodium carbonate is one of the conventional uh, traditional cleaning uh, thing that is being used for uh, cleaning of the meat processing plant as well as equipment so these substances are efficient in dissolving any kind of a protein residue or the fat residue but might cause corrosion in the tools and equipment if the ph is 11 and above so that is one of the added disadvantage even though they will help in proper cleaning by removing any kind of a soil material such as like the protein residues or fat residue from the equipment but if the pH goes anything above than 11, they might actually corrode the equipment. So, corrosion will be a problem when the pH increases to a level that is 11. Okay. So, that is about the cleaning agents. Okay. So, herein I have given you a table which gives you an idea about what are the type of detergents that are commonly being used in a meat industry. What is its function? and what are the possible limitation of the same so first then we have the one of the traditional alkalis which is used as a detergent so what are the alkalis so the alkalis can be sodium hydroxide or it can be sodium carbonate sodium bicarbonate sodium silicate or sodium phosphate so alkalis in either of the form could be used as a detergent in case of meat industry okay so what is its function so it will help us to digest disrupt or dissolve any kind of a soil especially the protein which acts as an emulsifier and also it will try to be a bactericidal agent whenever it is used at a percentage of 0.2 to 2 percentage of NaOH okay so it can effectively remove any kind of a residue soil particles such as like protein and it will act as a bacterial bactericidal that means that it is uh, killing the microorganism or bacteria specifically whenever we are using it at that particular percentage okay so what is the disadvantage or limitation some of these have poor solubility and wetting property that means that they will be not be soluble in the universal solvent that is the water and NaOH corrosion towards 
aluminium tin as well as zinc especially at a higher concentration so if at all we are using naoh anything more than 2% then it might actually start corroding the aluminium tin as well as zinc kind of a material of construction of the equipments okay so that is an added disadvantage of using uh, you know uh, alkali specifically the naoh okay so second end we have acids so acid is also used as an effective cleaning agent in case of meat industry and every other food uh, processing units okay so the acids that are effectively permitted to be used is nitric acid sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid phosphoric acid as well as acetic acid so what does this particular acid actually help in so it helps to remove any kind of a deposition such as water stones because of the usage of uh, you know um, non chlorinated water and such deposits do not dissolve in alkalis generally hno3.5% as well as phosphoric acid is eventually used so if we want to dissolve the deposition of the water that is because exclusively uh, resulting in the water stones so we cannot dissolve this by using merely an alkali okay so for that we need a strong acid so the acids at a percentage of 0.5 hno3 that is the nitric acid as well as phosphoric acid at a percentage of 2% if it is being used we can effectively digest this water stones and eventually can reduce the or tackle the problem which is happening from that okay so the important limitation towards this is that the strong acids actually corrode the metal surfaces and it can be also dangerous so that is an added disadvantage of usage of alkalis okay so this was about alkalis as well as acids so following which let us have an understanding what are the other types so this third one is the complex phosphates okay so the complex phosphates includes in the form of tetrasodium pyrophosphate or sodium tripolyphosphate sodium tetraphosphate and sodium hexametaphosphate so the complex phosphate in the form of these uh, reagents could be used and then added function for them is it will help in the water softening and eventually reduce the water stone formation on the meat equipment and the soil displacement by the emulsification peptidization prevention or re redeposition of the soil okay so they are help in this particular uh, thing and also the limitation towards this is that excellent but unstable in hot solution and in the presence of strong alkali because alkali cleaning is regularly practiced every day at least twice the alkali cleaning of an entire meat processing unit is ideally done so if such kind of a complex phosphates are used then it the presence of them will in turn become inactive in the presence of an alkali okay so the next thing we have another important agent that is the chelating agent so the chelating agents is ideally used in case of uh, meat processing or food processing industry is edta that is nothing but ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid okay so the possible function of this is that it is a sequestering agent and it helps in water softening and removal of any kind of a mineral deposition that might be persisting on the surface of the meat processing equipment okay so this was about chelating agent that is edta okay so the next important type that i have listed in this particular table is the wetting agents so the wetting agents are ideally the anionic salts which might be sodium salts of various complex organic material and non ionic materials such as like t pole okay so the coming to the function they are uh, they possess a good wetting as well as penetrating property on the soil and it is a stable dispersion and then emulsion emulsion formation okay but the major disadvantage of this is they are exclusively expensive they are exclusively expensive okay so these are the important detergents which are chiefly used in the meat processing unit so that we can effectively combat or remove any kind of the soil material that might be persisting on the sur surface of the meat processing equipment as well as the surface of the meat processing plant okay so next thing we let us have an understanding on the disinfection technique so this so far we have discussed about the cleaning now we are talking about the disinfection to eliminate any kind of a microorganism that might be persisting on the surface we need to effectively disinfect it 
So how exactly we are disinfecting it? By subjecting them for hot water treatment or chemical disinfection. Okay, so the chemical or the hot water which is the physical method of disinfection should be effectively in place so that we can achieve and uh, eventually the di disinfection via this. Okay, so let us have an understanding on the chemical disinfection techniques or chemical disinfection. So how exactly they are being used and what are the criteria that has to be met whenever a chemical is being used for that particular disinfection purpose okay so they are preferred for most application in meat industry as they are easy to use and do not involve any risk of as accidents and other negative side such as damage to equipment by generating high humidity or any kind of a secondary metabolites or water condensation which may occur when using in the steam okay so they might be used because they do not possess any of this particular kind of a problem Okay, so the best results are achieved when chemical disinfection is preceded by intensive dry or wet cleaning so that we can ensure that there is no residual of any kind of a chemical that is remaining on the surface. So to ensure that we must subject the entire plant thoroughly for dry as well as wet cleaning practices. Okay, so that we can eventually tackle that particular problem. Okay, so the cleaning and disinfection. How exactly it is being done? So several days disinfection by hot water and chemical are necessary for hand tools, meat saws as well as cutting goods. So as you can actually see in here, this is a hand saw which is regularly used in the meat industry and this is a cutting board. So such kind of tools and equipment which are regularly used, so they need proper cleaning. So there have to be a regular interval of time, say one hour. So after every one hour, they must be subjected for proper disinfection as well as cleaning. So that any kind of a contamination that might be persisting on the surface will not be carried forward to any other kind of the body part and eventually the cross contamination can be avoided. Okay, so this is first thing. Okay, this is the first scheme. So the second scheme is daily disinfection is uh, disinfection is useful for dismantled equipment such as the parts of the grinders, fillers as well as stuffers. So any kind of a equipment which is regularly uh, you know um, dismantled at a regular interval of time, they must be subjected for thorough cleaning as well. Okay, since we are dismantling it and it can be dismantled easily, it should be make it a point, uh, it should be in place that we are effectively cleaning them so that we can avoid any other kind of a problem. So next one is disinfection once a week is recommended for other equipment and floors and walls processing as well as chilling globe. So this kind of disinfection towards the acid as well as alkali must also be in place so that we can avoid any other kind of possible hazard coming from them. Okay. So this is the disinfection scheme which shall be in place. Okay. So herein I have established a cleaning and disinfectant plan for a meat grinder so that we will have a clear understanding and how exactly the cleaning as well as the disinfection of every equipment is should be done in case of a meat processing unit. So this particular you know meat uh, cleaning and disinfection plan is for meat grinder. Okay, so how exactly one must actually follow cleaning and disinfection towards a meat grinder. So the first step that is step one is pre-cleaning. So what do we understand by pre-cleaning? It is just nothing but rinsing the entire plant with the or entire meat grinder with the portable water and the temperature of the water shall be anywhere between 40 to 50 and the pressure should be 20 to 30 bars. So this has to be noted down. So this is the first step. So the clean pre-cleaning will ensure any kind of a adhered physically visible uh, contaminants can be eventually removed from the meat grinder okay so second one is the cleaning so what does this cleaning actually has to do so the cleaning is meant nothing but it has to be performed daily of course it has to be performed daily specifically to the meat grinder we are talking here and the agent that we are using is alkali so the alkali cleaning must be performed to the meat grinder on a daily basis and the concentration of the alkali it can be one percent and the temperature at which the cleaning has to be done is anywhere between 40 to 50 and the time interval of cleaning or time interval of contact of this particular alkali with the meat grinder is 20 to 30 minutes and the pH of this can be approximately 
12 since it is an alkali so the ph is 12 okay so coming to the acid cleaning okay so the acid cleaning do not be practiced is not practiced on an everyday basis so it is practiced once in every month okay so as we have already studied we are using a variety of acids which are concentrated by nature so the concentration of any of the acids which are being used shall not be anything more than 1.5 depending on what kind of acid that we are actually using so hno3 that is the nitric acid is widely used acid in case of um, food industry and similarly the temperature of the solution shall not be anywhere less than 40 but between 40 to 50 and the time of interval contact is 20 to 30 minutes and the pH shall be approximately 1.8 since it is acid the pH is eventually less okay so this is the step one as well as step two of cleaning and disinfection plan for meat grinder all right so for next important point that has to be noted here is the rinsing so soon after the cleaning via uh, by the acid or an alkali so we will have to subject it for rinsing which is step 3 so in the rinsing um, eventually we are using the potable water and the temperature of water shall be between 30 to 50 degrees centigrade and the pressure shall be 5 to 10 bars okay so similarly the disinfection protocol that we are talking about will follow the next step that is step 4 in the cleaning process so the disinfection should be done twice every week so two times a week so the agent we can use the disinfectant might be a chemical or a physical one and the concentration of this shall be anywhere 0.5 and the time of interval or the contact will be 30 minutes and the pH shall be approximately anywhere 0. or 5.7 okay so similarly if we are using any kind of a chemical disinfectant agent so it has to be practiced three times every week so three times every week and the concentration of the chemicals that are being used as a disinfectant shall be one percent and the temperature shall be anywhere between 30 to 40 degrees centigrade and the time of contact shall be 30 minutes and the ph shall be 10.2 which is approximate ph okay so this is about the step four of cleaning and sanitation plan for the meat grinder so finally at last we have final rinsing so in the final rinsing we will be rinsing the entire meat grinder with the portable water which has a temperature of 30 to 50 with a pressure of anywhere between 5 to 10 bars so this is the process protocol that is the five step process protocol which must be significantly implemented so that we can achieve any kind of a contamination so that we can achieve clean hygienic equipment at the end of the day okay so that must be effectively in place so that we can regularly avoid any kind of a contamination towards the meat equipment as well so this was about the cleaning practices and the hygienic practices and the sanitation of the entire meat equipment as well as the meat industry all right so i hope this particular lecture towards this is effectively understood wherein we have discussed about the hygienic sanitation practices towards the meat equipment as well as meat industry okay so that's all for the day guys i hope everyone have significantly understood whatever that has been discussed in today's deliberation thank you very much